to talk to you about this part of my old project from the, that ran under the auspices of the Romanian Academy uh, in Cluj, uh, from which I took out the part, the late Bronze Age, and uh, tried to address the issue of urn fields. It's a bit more complicated in the Carpathian Basin because, especially in Transylvania, we have urn burials. Actually, it's the standard burial for the Middle Bronze Age, so urn fields, it's difficult to translate in the local uh, discussion. As a region that I would like to look at is the Eastern Carpathian Basin, defined by the Carpathian Arch, the Tisa River, and down in the Serbian part by the Danube River. It's a very eclectic uh, part of the Carpathian Basin. It, high, it has highlands, mountains, and then, of course, the eastern part of the Great Hungarian Plain. It's not just a geographic and a hydrographic region, but what's important about it, it's a subsoil, subsurface lithology, not so much geology, but lithology that happens below it. Usually we get the maps where you go like it's on the mountain, that sites are or burial grounds are located on the mountains or on the plains, but in my opinion it's important to match these against the subsurface lithology. And on top of that, what would be more, even more important is the flora, the fauna of the period in discussion, because usually we are used to pictures, when we're taking pictures of a burial mound or settlement, uh, fortification to see the present-day landscape of it, which is usually barren, because it was overexploited, especially in the western part of the Eastern Carpathian Basin, the so-called uh, culture pusta that was created in more recent times. But then again, their own perceptions of their world, their aimic perception, was totally different. And for this purpose, pale uh, paleopalinography, it's very important. There are quite a few sites and work is ongoing, and uh, some of them even have the complete spectrum for the entire Holocene. This results in what I've coined arc ecozones. Basically, if you superimpose all these levels and then match them against archaeological materials, you get sort of different geomorphological, hydrological, environmental, and paleoflora regions, which sort of are similar but nevertheless different. And within them, you can find even subgroups. And as you can see, uh, some regions differ in flora. Uh, well. I would like to make the point of flora in this case, because Transylvania, for example, the brown part, the B2 arc, uh, the B arc ecozone, it's fully wooded, mountains obviously, and then what's surprising in my opinion is that in the western part, in the or eastern part of the Hungarian plain, those regions are woodlands as well, woodland steppes. So it's not the present day view of the entire region, which is important to take away from the pictures the, that are being shown or will be shown at the session. So, the discussed archicozones. Chronology. Uh, it's another interesting thing in the Carpathian <laughs> Basin. Uh, usually there are pottery groups, and then when we find the type of burial ground or settlement with some different type of potteries, then we coin it a group, a culture, and then we expand it, and then we're like in a mess. And the way to transition this, we can date those sites with radiocarbon, and that's helpful. But the question is, how do we relate those sites, individual sites that we dated with radiocarbon, and then we created the chronology? So my suggestion or my solution for myself was the relative absolute chronology that's not very uh, embedded in the Carpathian Basin with the late Bronze Age and early Bronze Age phases, and how you relate those relative stratigraphical regions. And then this middle part can be related or translated, used as a sort of lingua franca for uh, chronology, to date then the absolute chronologies that would come, to give us a step, a uh, talking point that we can or reach an agreement on. Actually, what's really important in the way I see the Late Bronze Age is that the Late Bronze Age starts around the latest phases of what we call the Wittenberg cultures and the Ottoman, and ends uh, at, the, at the end of Hashtag A. So when I'm referring to Late Bronze Age 1, 2, 3, it's between this uh, relative chronological period. The project uh, that we just uh, recently finished uh, had the uh, archaeologists, anthropologists. Uh, we focused on, uh, it was called Death Metals 2, uh, focused on the Bronze Age, and we tried to gather all the burial ground, known burial, gra burial grounds with metals in burials from the Eastern Carpathian Basin. And then we structured everything basically that was there and what wasn't there. We went into the museums, dug into everything with metals and humans and bones, and then tried to get the results. Uh, even more, a more complex system for the metals in classifying them. And uh, in all, we have, we have found 727 graves with metals for the entire Bronze Age. 
uh, with well, almost 5,000 metal finds, but then again, that's tricky because most of them are small beats. For example, the burial ground or the site of Lepouche yielded most of them, like literally hundreds, so that would qualify as one. And yes, it's a bit more varied picture if you look in detail to this. The strategy was that we would look for similar um, typologies of metals, both in shape and decoration, and try to date those, respectively those that are what we would call foreign to this region, in order to get a better chronology for metals, because usually when they are found in hordes, it's not really datable by radiocarbon, quite often not commonly found with datable materials. So this would be a way to bridge that gap, and then moving on, uh, getting 10 of the most chronologically closest finds and uh, see if they are related to individuals from the various regions of the Eastern Carpathian Basin, basically trying to trace kinships. If I'm not saying that people with uh, metals were elites, but high-ranking parts of society, uh, you would think that in the Bronze Age, bronze and other metals would be very expensive, then you would imagine that a sort of kinship relation would exist or not, between various uh, regions or uh, larger regions. Then again, the issue of chronologies, metal chronologies versus pottery chronologies. How do you combine those two? How do you relate <coughs> the two? And I think burials are the best way to do this because you have the radiocarbon data there, you have the metals and you have the pottery and we can start from here. Basically, we gather, it's more, it's more a synoptic study and we try to catch up with all the data for, that has been gathered in the museums in the past 200 years. So, a bit of overview <coughs> of, obviously, most of the burials, uh, these are inhumation and in, uh, cremation burials as well, are found in the Late Bronze Age. Uh, that's their distribution. Then, the body treatments for the late Bronze Age, as I'm trying to close in on our talking, uh, on our uh, subject session, is, um, well, incineration obviously is the most dominant, but inhumation burials are quite common. Surprisingly, in Transylvania, where previously in the Middle Bronze Age, uh, incineration was the dominant, and by the time of the urn fields, inhumation is quite common, or the most common in Transylvania. A couple of examples, usually they are practiced in uh, urns. These are from Kruchen. We are highly waiting the publication of the Kruchen burial ground. I have been told that it's in progress, so I have been kindly allowed to reproduce a couple of them. Groupings. Single burials are quite rare, like almost inexistent, five of them in the entire period of 400 years. Usually they are found in burial grounds. The pots up there are, for, are actually urns from the Berkes and the uh, Demacher uh, burial grounds, and uh, none of them were collected, collected with bones, so there goes our radiocarbon theory for those sites. But nevertheless, the metals were at hand and we could uh, document them in detail. Then the issue of whether the, site, the burial grounds were flat, plain, or similar. Uh, these numbers show grave numbers, but then again, there are just two sites that are similar in the, in the entire region, one of them is Le Push, and then we can debate whether that's a burial ground or not. And the other one is uh, a smaller site excavated in the 60s next to, in the near ship in Hungary, the red dot up there. Their locations, yet again, quite standardized, in my opinion, either on the first terrace uh, of a river, of a larger river, or on knolls, usually in the Great Hungarian Plain. What uh, stands out are the four terrace burial graves and the uh, cave burials. Both of them are coming just from two sites, yet again La Push, and the other one, the Igritsa cave, which is quite famous because of its finds in the Apusain Mountains. A bit of overview of statistics, of metals, how they uh, find themselves, like I said, from the late uh, Wittenberg Ottoman phases, as you would see the late Bronze Age one, to Hashtata, which is a2, which would be equaling 3b in my chronology. Most of them appear in the earlier part, and the red bar there, again, that's Le Push responsible for that. That's a different category of sites, and it has many, many, many metal finds. Broken uh, down based on the metals that have been identified. Obviously, bronze is the most dominant. The four uh, 
beads are yet again from La Bouche, but what's really interesting in discussion, in this discussion, are, in my opinion, the, well, it shifted a bit, sorry for that, are the iron finds. One of the earliest iron finds already appear in the, in the middle, late Bronze Age, and they vary from socketed axe to bracelets to gold-plated iron knives, and most of them are located next to the northern part of the Eastern Carpathian Basin, with the exception of uh, Bobda, that uh, has a iron bangle. Most common objects, jewelry objects, are uh, either scales, beads, or uh, bracelets, but what I would like to go in are the fibula at this moment, because they are not very common in this region, in my opinion. They are not just an answer to the environmental changes, but also Central European influences in this region. Sadly, these haven't had any bones associated with or collected with, so I can't date this, but uh, nevertheless, it's an interesting uh, point. Razors is another interesting thing, since the beauty of the warrior's body, everybody is going for the whole warrior kit, and then razors and pins was one of the interesting things, not that just the swords or the weapons that we associated with warriors. And then in the entire repertoire of the late Bronze Age, we only have two sites with razors, the one at uh, Kurchen, that's in the Bahar, and then the Igritsa cave that I mentioned before, which is a special <coughs> site with a lot of special finds. Uh, in my opinion, both of them are in, uh, indicative of foreign influences and uh, differ from the standard. Weapons and tools, usually uh, a hot topic. And what I uh, really liked about this research is that at Petruno, it's a site next to uh, Timisoara, next to the Bobda and the Chen sites, we actually discovered in the deposits that has been lying there for 30 years a sword that was uh, even uh, the has its hilt uh, preserved from antler. So that's the only sword burial in the entire Eastern Carpathian Basin in the entire Bronze Age, and we are dating this as well. So can't wait for Jesper to bring me the dates. And then the last uh, chapter that I would like point that I would like to make is the ingots and vessels, which yet again are not very common, actually not common at all in the Eastern Carpathian Basin, and they are usually found in the later phases. Ingots are either bar-shaped or uh, semi-spherical, and in one case, again at La Bush, if I remember correctly, they are made of iron, so that's uh, quite important. Vessels, as I have seen today, they are quite common in some uh, Central European uh, burials, but I only have two recorded instances here with vessels, yet again indicating that uh, direction of contact. So I, would, I could have gone into the details of how an Easter Compatian identity and the structure or can be structured or is negotiated. What I found interesting is rather to, pre to present the data that is coming from outside the Carpathian Basin. So this is what's not specific for the Carpathian Basin. Everything else, well, we are negotiating with Springer and it will be in the book and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>